going to Bible study and singing. Oye, la música católica, compadre. Dios, papá, Dios. They were legit to quit. But the Ali's were the first people I ever met, ever, beside my godfather that ever spoke to me about sex. And then I had this Puerto Rican dude on my block, Puerto Rican Nelson. He lived in the back. He was a bartender in the city. He used to always ask me, and he wasn't a freak or nothing. I always thought that at one point he would molest me. Yeah. And even till today, I think deep sometimes. And fucking Puerto Rican Nelson never molest me because he used to always have a robe on and slippers and shit. <laughs> That's how he walked around. Oh my God, Puerto Rican Nelson! Was... I love that you're not sure if he did. You feel like it's maybe. Yeah, like I think that he ever doped me. Like he ever put a Cosby <laughs> on me because everything about him fits like an mo. He was just a good dude. Yeah. That we used to go outside and help us fix our bike, and he was a Spanish dude, and he was just you know he had the sideburns and the leather jacket, and it was the fucking early '70s, and I moved to Jersey. And he would talk to a bunch of us, and one day he would take us in the back. His claim to fame with me was that I became friends with him. And i go over there, and he had a black friend uh, that had went over to the, the Rock of Gibraltar, and he brought pictures back. And then he would just talk to me. And then one day he asked me, me, me and <laughs> you had a couple of beers. You ever go to somebody's house, and you, you go to their house a lot, and they're sober? But one day you catch them in their fucking hammock. Yeah. And we go over there, and it's like early in the morning. Like, I used to go over there every morning at 10 and wake them up and, 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 and what's up, man? What are we going to do today? Give me an hour. I'll go out there and play stickball with you. And he come out with coffee, and he reeked of alcohol. Yeah. You know, he was <laughs> one of those dudes in the summer. You know, no air conditioning. Or Just a dynamite dude. Yeah. And one day uh, I knock on the door, and. He answers with a towel around him, and he's sitting down like he's all fucked up. I go, Nelson, you're going to play football? He's like, man, not today, you know, and all this shit. He goes, come back in like two hours. So, you know, we were, in those days, you're punctual. Yeah. Like, we were there in two hours. He answers, though, you guys again? The fucking curtains were still up. He invites us in. He's got a towel on. You know, he turns the light on, and there's, like, a table filled with alcohol, you know, and, like... Oh, yeah? How old were you at this point? Twelve. <laughs> Twelve, and I can't remember who what? the fuck I walked in there with. Like, it was, like, six of us in the neighborhood that liked Nelson, but two of us actually interacted a little closer with Nelson. Yeah. I was Spanish, so I understood Nelson's world. I knew Puerto Rican people, but I can't believe who else <laughs> was the other guy that mingled with Nelson. So we had woken Nelson up. He goes, come in, come in. We sit on his couch. You guys want a soda? He gives us a soda. He puts the TV on. You can see he's still fucked up from the night before. He's got the towel on. And he's like, so you guys get late? And we don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Like, nobody ever spoke to me like that. I had uncles that would ask me, Did anybody suck your dick yet? Yeah. Are you pissing sweet yet? That type of shit. <laughs> but this... <laughs> You oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you're Spanish, they preguntan, "Oye, tú me You know what I'm saying? Great. Yeah, it's it's a great line. <laughs> but Nelson was basically the first person ever. But like, oh I God. I known about sex, but Nelson was the first person ever that said it could be yours. You know, what I'm saying? like, like, what do you mean you never had sex? I got a girl right now. She'll come over and clean your pipe. And we're like, and we're both like fucking shit in our pants. <laughs> Yeah, you come up with like ten dollars or something. We're like, nah, nah, nah. So that was it. He never talked about it again. And then one day we're sitting there like a month. I just love this a guy, like a, a guy month. in a fucking towel, has neighborhood boys over and offers to get them all whore. and he's drunk because he's outraged that they haven't had sex at fourteen or twelve. <laughs> so he was cool as fuck. He used to play bad basketball with us and shit. So one day I go over there with this kid and he starts telling us. What's his name again? Puerto Rican Nelson. We go. <laughs> Is it be capitalized? No, Puerto Rican Nelson was cool as fuck because he used to bring us weed from the city and he would actually give us seven joints for five dollars. Wow. He really took care of us. It wasn't like he was a bad guy, which. To me, meant the world, 
because a lot of people could bring you weed over in those days, but they say, I take a joint off the top. Mm. He was like, I, I got to go over it anyway. Don't worry about it. The guy gives me a better deal. So I always liked him because of that. So one day we're there, and a, and a girl's there. A girl comes out of his bedroom. Me and my buddy are like, wow. Look at Puerto Rican now, some of the broad. She sits on his lap and shit. And he's like, yeah, this is my girl. And he's feeling her up. And he's making out in front of her. <laughs> and feeling her titties and shit. <laughs> and me and my buddy are frozen. Like, we're just, I can feel, I can feel, I can't remember who the fuck it was. So, wow. boom, how old just, was this guy? This guy had to be 28, and the bro was like 21. But he was he was one of those he had to be twenty six maybe. He he was from somewhere else and he lived there. This is before the computer and before neighborhood watch and before <laughs> I, and, <laughs> and no one was freaked out by a pack of twelve year olds hanging out with them. No, I'm because like, in those days a lot of parents came out and play with kids and you I know, that's different touch. now. See it's different. I would never now. be able to play with a random kid no, in my neighborhood. So everybody knew him from the neighborhood and in those days we wanted to go into the murky waters. Yeah. And he was kind of opening the door. Not really, to be honest with you. Mm. It took a long time. It's not like he lurked us into his house and said, do you guys want to have sex? This is after we knew him for a year. Right. We, we'd go back there all the time and get water after a basketball game. We knew him, you know. But now he knew we were growing up and he knew what our needs were. I look at it now. Like he was, he was just trying to, but we couldn't handle it. Yeah. So one day we're sitting back there. We had a basketball game. And he's like, hey, man. What'd you think of that fucking broad the other day? Me and my buddy like, oh, she was banging. He goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, tell, tell these guys how hot she was. And me and my buddy's like, yeah, she was hot. And he's like, oh, when can we see it? He goes, listen, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> he goes, listen, I'm going to fuck her tonight in the living room. And I'll leave the window open. You guys can come by and listen. <laughs> What's up, you bad motherfuckers? <laughs> Welcome to the Wednesday night edition of the church, Greg Fitzsimmons, my main man and fucking co-host, Lee Sayat. Hello. What's up, dog? Nothing. You and I both had a rough day yesterday. Listen, my day was so fucking rough yesterday because I didn't even know it. I went home that night. I, first of all, when the podcast ended, I was so fucked up. I was just talking to Steve Simone, and I was nodding out right here. I'm like, I can't make it home. I went home. My wife was talking shit about something. Daycare. I just looked at her and I said, I'm going to bed. She's like, what? You just walked in. I'm going right to bed. I went right to bed. I got anxiety. I was just telling you guys, I got anxiety in my fucking sleep. Like, I got up and just sat there, pulled the sleep apnea mask off. I didn't know what to do. Finally, after the third time, my wife got up and we talked. She's like, what's the matter? Breathe through it. Next day, I woke up. I was still fucking dragging ass. And when I got to the acupuncturist, she said something to me. She goes, you're not yourself today. What's going on? I go, I don't know. She started sticking needles in me and shit. And then she goes... What did you take last night? It's still in your system. And I go, well, get this motherfucker <laughs> out. And she fucking went down to my calf, and she picked the tender spot and shoved that little needle in there. And I put my head down. She cut me. There was smokes in the cup and shit. I was like fucking Eddie Munster. I had smoke still coming out of me the next day. And uh, I felt great after that. I just drank a bunch of water the rest of the day, and I felt great last night. I went to the comedy store, but... I will never eat those fucking the fuck that <laughs> yes, shit. Yes, you will. You told me you told me that we weren't gonna do it tonight and I got here like, well, we're we're not going deep. No, deep. we switched cheap with you. That's we'll nothing. Go, we're going we'll to go like a day cast now. We didn't do dick. Greg Fitzsimmons. Wait, you this all happened last night? Monday night. I got Monday we night? got fucked up. They made some special Halloween uh edibles for us and me and him inhaled them. Like, it was an edible that had the devil's face the on devil's it. The devil's face on it. Oh what's the shop you go to? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good special shit. Halloween stuff. Oh, we got fucked fucking plastered. Right. I went home. I was telling you I had anxiety in my sleep, which I never really had before. Like, I had to get up and think about what was it's going on. It's tough at night because you can't go out in the street. You, you can't just go out to a coffee shop. You can't go see a movie. You're fucking trapped in the darkness. And no life forms are around you. They're all slumbering. It's just you. Thank God you got a wife. <sighs> well, she always wakes up when I get up. I mean, you know, as soon as I get up, she gets up. Like, what's the problem? You know. After and then the you're first... up for the day? No, some nights I get up for the night, but yeah. la that night particularly, I was so high, I would go back to sleep. Yeah. Like, I would get up, get my composure, and then put the sleep apnea mask on and go right back to sleep. Yeah. Then a half hour later, get up again, get my composure. So what you really need is a sleep apnea mask that's also a bong, so that you can feed it. Well, something like that, there's fucking people. Something. Stay level. 
Yeah, it was just the... Was it like weed anxiety? Because I got anxiety driving. I, I saw a cop, and I was sure he was going to pull me over, so I pulled a U-turn, and I went all the way home. Like, I was, I was going to stop at a restaurant. I was like, I can't do no, it. No, I don't get that type of anxiety no more. I was getting anxiety uh, about two years ago. I would take edibles and go to kickboxing class. And once I would run out of oxygen, oh, my God. Um, I would become I would become so sensitive, like I would hear people going, ah, uh, and all this shit, but yeah. I would hear it like in an echo, and oh, it was fuck. I would have to step outside the gym and just listen to quiet and have to go back in. I think that's what, there's a lot of things I respect about you, but I think one of the main things is how you're able to push these side effects to the side and continue being the rampant deviant that you are. You have to. You fucking have. The only drug I couldn't push to the side was blow. Like, once I did blow, I was done for the night. There was no, I'll see you in two hours. Like, it just affected me. Like, I would disappear from Rogan. Yeah. <clears throat> like, he's a great guy. And Joe really cared for me. Like, the, the the fact that he's still my friend after all these years, because at the end of the day, Joe don't really like alcohol and drugs. Yeah. You got to watch it around him with him. I've told people a thousand times, watch it, because Joe is cool, but the next day I'll get a call, how you drank 19 beers and you have a problem. He'll count your fucking beers because he's, you know, it's just he he does he's not from that world. Mm -hmm. So for no, years, he didn't even get high until no. I mean, it's, he was probably in his late twenties before he started. Really yeah, he's high. not from that world. He doesn't know much. He'll drink a Heineken or two. Yeah, one night he got really drunk at, in Vegas. They sent him a bunch of shots, and that's the night I saw that you know he's a sweetheart of a guy. That happened later on in life when he started getting high. Right. So, but you have to, you know, he, he watches you because he cares about you in a way. Like, he'll meet you and go, oh, he's a nice guy, but fuck, that guy could tip him back or whatever. But he detests drugs. He detests cocaine. Yeah. And I would do a show with him. I would open for him, and I'd already have it in my pocket. I'd have it in the top pocket, or it was already in the hotel room. Yeah. So when I got off that stage, there was no good nights. Uh -huh. There was no see you in 15 minutes. You they had an were, agenda. It was over. The yeah. phone got shut off. I locked the fucking door, and nobody was coming in. Yeah. I already had beers upstairs, two beers maybe, and I already had weed, and I had everything I needed for the night in this hotel room. And you you'd were, stay in there alone and do blow? All fucking night. Who the fuck sits alone and does blow? I've never heard of that in my life. You know, it's, it's the type of drug that it gets... When you start it, when you first do blow, yeah, Lee, come over. Craig's coming over. Greg's coming over. We're going to get high and, you know, fucking go to a bar and pick up chicks right. and talk to people. You get chatty. But then the drug through time becomes something else. Now, when the package is gone, the package is gone. When I first started doing coke, once the last line was gone, it's gone. Let's go do something else. Then it started. We got to call the guy. Let's call this motherfucker and get another one. And then you start getting coke and leaving some at the house for later on when you come back. You know, I'll just have a beer and do a couple lines by myself. Yeah. And then it gets to the point where it just flipped on me. I couldn't be around people no more. Like after 12 or 13 years of doing coke, the script flipped on me. And I was always more comfortable being by my... I think since 90, 94, when I got out of the prison, the halfway house and all that stuff, and I started doing... I, I was doing it always by myself. A chick would not come in that door unless I already shook her down. What, Joe, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is this girl that I'm bringing into my fucking cubicle of death is not coming in on a maybe. Yeah. She's either going to suck my dick oh, or she's right. going home in those right. days. Right, There was no... She's got a role to play. Yeah, there we're was not, no... We're not going to assign duties once <clears throat> we get inside. There was no plan. Once yep. I get in, first thing I'm going to do is set out a line and make you take your panties off and suck my dick yeah. so I know what time it is. There's no <laughs> fucking around. There's, you think I'm done? You think I'm fucking crazy? You think I'm crazy? First thing I do when a girl comes over in those days is I'd say, she pee. Oh, my God, it's great to be here. Put the heater on. Yeah. And I'd go, hold on, I'm cutting the line. Let's see what you got under that fucking skirt. And I either eat that monkey just to get it out of the way. Why are we going to sit here for three hours with this monkey in the way? Because the whole time you're thinking about how I'm going to fuck her, what positions, look at her thighs. Let's get that shit out of the way. How often would it work? Every fucking time. Really? No, no, no. Because before, listen to me, before she came through the door, she was already qualified. <laughs> like she was already asked, shaken down, like if yeah. you understand. I'm going to do more blow. I'll come back with you. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you something. I don't fuck around. You're a savage, right? Yeah, what do you mean? What I mean is we're going to do a couple lines. I'm putting you to work. <laughs> and they would look at me and go, you're fucking crazy? Or, yeah, I know. What do you mean by right. work? I'm giving you <clears throat> drugs. I'm turning you out. 
And then I would say it right now. You know, right. Suck some dick. I'm going to eat your asshole. <laughs> and they would just look at me because we're not going to fuck around. We're not going to make out. I don't want to make out. What am I, 10? I don't want to make out with nobody. I want to eat that ass. I want my dick sucked. I want you to play with your pussy. I want to do all creepy shit. You know what I'm saying? Play with your pussy. Let me watch it while I whack off and put a coke rock in your ass. This is nothing about love. There's nothing. Flip over. You know, this is fucking nothing. This was fucking crazy. And it worked all the time. And then you cuddle, <clears throat> you eat her asshole, and then no, you cuddle. No, out in the morning. Once the blow is done, you have no idea. Because but then, but what I don't understand is the alone thing. Like, what do you do? Like, if I finish a gig on a Friday night, and I go back to the hotel room, and I, I have a couple puffs, watch Netflix, maybe I beat off. I'm asleep by 3 a.m. What do you do when you're doing coke alone in a hotel room? Oh what what activities transpire? It is a horrible in hindsight, thinking about it now, it is one of the worst things I would do. You know, if you see my face, I have pics on my face. I would just sit there with the blow and look for shit. Yeah. I would pick veins in there. Really? Because I hated myself or I hated the situation I was in. Ah. So I would <clears throat> go home at night. All right, let's say I had a gram of coke, gram and a half. Because I, I would go for broke. Fuck a half gram. I'd, do, yeah. I'd open up with a half gram, uh, a gram. Okay, after a comedy show on the road, sure. The first show at a comedy club, I'm trying to pick up a waitress or somebody at the show. Like, because they're looking at me going, oh, yeah, because right on stage, I'm going to talk about doing blow. So when I get off stage during the first show, somebody's going to say something to me or something's going to go somewhere. It's going to go somewhere. Oh, you do blow or something. Or the second show. The second show for sure. More likely to have somebody's a Somebody's going to say, do you want a blast? Show. Well, there's going to be people at the bar, and some girls are going to come over and go, I have a blast. Next thing you know, you're doing a blast, and they got a miniskirt, and you're talking to them, and this chick's a fucking savage. You know, she didn't yeah. go out with a miniskirt on a Friday night. Yeah. Because she's going to church on Sunday. She's she not hanging out, out with the yeah. guy with the sniffles Fake by kids accident. With the, with, the, with the shirt going down yeah. their sleeve. Once they start drinking, <clears throat> it's 1 o'clock, you know what time it is. Then they'll say to you, what are you going to do after this? I'm going to go back to the hotel room. Do you want to come to my place? Right there. Right there, you like, listen. I got this guy, he'll bring an eight ball up, and listen, understand one thing. If I come back to your house, I'm putting a coke rock in your asshole, and I'm eating you and they'll look at you like, okay, or, oh my God, you just got me hot, or, no, I have a husband, or I have a yeah. boyfriend. I mean, it's crazy. But here's the other side of the question. Here's the other side that, that happened that I never felt good about. There was a lot of people I brought home that were in relationships, that were in marriages. Yeah. You know, that they were just a, as much of a junkie as you were. Right. You know, when you're a junkie, you over, uh, you tolerate shit. You know, I know 20 situations where I brought people home. I didn't know. And then you know. What? You know who I saw a picture of is, uh, what's her name? Fuck. Jennifer Aniston. No. Whoopi Goldberg. Sarah Silverman. At the premiere for a movie. Do you see that picture? I didn't know she was so hot. Oh, no. She dresses up. When she dresses up, it's like a whole different person. I had never seen that yeah. before. It's unbelievable. Sarah Selman's a good-looking little fucking she's freak. Beautiful. Yeah, she always dresses down, and I've never yeah, seen that. She dresses down. Have you seen it? Yeah, what, her naked? That, that, no, no, the pictures. What fucking picture? Uh, the, put that down a little bit, buddy. What picture? The, at her premiere. Who's premiere? Sarah Silverman. She's got a new movie out. Oh, Sarah does. Yeah, a little indie film. Okay, I didn't know none of this yeah. shit. He's right. talking about Hunger Games. Also, he's talking about People Sarah are talking Sil about Oscar nominations and really? shit. Yeah, really good. She did a really good job. You know, she's one of those people that's been around forever. She's like a, she's like AIDS. She won't go away. Can't stop it. You know, she's been around with, you know, when I came to this town, she had just popped in something about Mary. Even though she was just sitting at a whole table listening, she was involved in that movie. Uh, that was a great fucking movie. I right. laughed my ass off. But she won't go away. She always stays relevant. You know, she always pops. She popped a great HBO special last year. Yeah. It wasn't as much as great as how she did it at Largo. Yeah. And all that type of stuff. So, she yeah, does she, it her own way. She's she like Joey Diaz. Own. Well, how else are you going to do it? I got nobody, you know, I got nobody's way to do it. This is the only way you can do it. Yeah. What's up, Irish? Good to see you, man. Fucking Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Right? I've been holding out all week. I've been thinking about fucking pumpkin pies since yeah. like last Saturday. Like, yeah. Like by last Thursday, you're like, man, I can't hold out no more. I need a fucking piece of pumpkin pie. I'm smoking this high cap. I never got meat. into the pumpkin thing. Oh, that's my favorite thing in the world. Pumpkin favorite pie, fucking thing in the world. little bit of whipped cream on top. <sighs> Heat that motherfucker up. Oh. And you know what? I hated pumpkin pie as a kid. Yeah? I liked like faggy colors like boysenberry and apple. But when I went to Catholic school, I got stuck with a pumpkin pie once. 
oh my god, how yeah. fucking good are those? Yeah, things? and the cheaper the better. Right, give me like that one of those oven ones Costco. that you cut up. Oh my yeah. fucking god, Lee right. with some Cool Whip. Cool Whip, not even real whipped cream. No, 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 not Cool Whip. The real shit, the can. Okay. Real Whip. I don't fucking whip. With Cool Whip. That tub of shit. I'll go buy. I'll go to a bodega and buy one of those little Intman's pies, the one the size of your fist. You pop it right out of there. I've um, always wondered what those are. The little pie fillings. They're little pie fillings. It's just like a little mini pie it's like that exactly, they have at 7-Eleven. It's oh. exactly a pie, but it's the size of your fist. And if you're between meals, you need a little pick-me-up, you grab yourself an Entman's pie, apple. They'll throw it in the microwave for you. Really? Pop it out of the tin thing, throw it in the microwave. I've never ate one of those. Yeah, it's great. Entman's. I don't know what the fuck that is. It's scary. Like Entman's. You never heard of that? Entman's I right, heard of. But right. they have little apple pie? Yeah, little a- every pie. It's on the counter like next to the... This is how fat I, I was... I know what you're talking about, and it's next to like those little donuts, but it's just like pie filling. I was always too scared to get it. I was like, I don't know what the fuck that is. I, I didn't know if you had to bake it or something. I've always been a hostess apple pie type. Of really? Thing. That was part of my game growing up. That's a quick filler. That's just nothing but That's pure sugar. It's glazed, yeah. It's glazed with a fucking can of Coke. Oh, yeah, oh my God. The dentist God. is cheering you on. <laughs> <laughs> the dentist is like, That's my boy. Shit. <laughs> That's my motherfucker right there. That's shit. money in the bank. Oh, my God. I love You those see him glazed, unloading man. the truck out back, your dentist. You know, now you eat that hostess and it's fucking horrendous. That food is all horrendous. They've taken chemicals out. They've added chemicals in. Remember the Hostess cupcake? Just a plain chocolate with the little yeah. fucking thing. Yeah, the little they, swirl. The little swirl. They gave you like a little heavy little dot of fucking sperm in there. Yeah. Now they give you nothing. It's like some fucking little fag with the hip. <laughs> Shoots a little gun in there with a little fucking little... You got to eat 10 <laughs> pounds of chocolate to get to a little fucking hippie sperm. <laughs> it's one drop. Yeah, it's used one drop. used to be the drop. whole load. You get the whole fucking load of sperm in there from the guy at the factory. Now nothing. Some skinny guy coughing who eats egg whites. <laughs> now, it used to be like a guy, a diabetic, blew yeah. a hot thick one oh, inside a of a cupcake. Oh, fucking tremendous. Those things were, you know, when you from the East Coast, you grew up on those things. And, and everybody's different. I think like South Jersey has tasty cakes in Philadelphia. Up by me, I was more of a... Uh, what did I like? I like the uh, ring dings. The rest of the country called them ding dongs. We call them dogs. ring dings. I'm a devil dog type of <laughs> motherfucker. Devil dog. But my all time favorite was the yo yos, the chocolate with the cream filled up like that, and you got two in a package, and then yeah. they got dipped in chocolate to boot. That's right. diabetics right, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one. The dentist is right there, tapping you on the back, giving That's you right. the seal of approval. Think Give me a Twinkie. You take the cellophane off, the little top gets stuck on it. You get to scrape that off with your teeth. They tried to stop making Twinkies, and people lost their shit. They picketed. They protested. They wrote letters. They brought it back. A Twinkies, year later. I got hooked on Twinkies <laughs> one night. Twinkies was the first sugar buzz I had because my mom, I would go to my mom and go, Mom, I'm going on a school trip. And instead of her just buying me two Twinkies, she'd buy me a box and say, share them with your friends. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. You would hoard the snacks? Listen, I would start eating those Twinkies <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night the night before, before the odd couple. I remember the first all-nighter I pulled on Twinkies. <laughs> One all-nighter on Twinkies. Yeah. And, and instead of snorting like, a, when you do blow, you do like blow every 20 minutes when you pull an all-nighter. Yeah. Shit. Guys, this is the funniest fucking story of all time. I pulled an all-nighter on Twinkies one night. <laughs> Before we went to Philadelphia, and where Betsy Ross did the fucking letter, yeah, where she the made letter? The, where she made the flag, the whatever flag. the fuck, yeah, and we went to see the Nutcracker Suite. My mother bought a box of those, a box of something else, and a box of something else, and it was the first addictive personality that I ever showed. I did not know it then. I thought about it years later, how I kept watching them. You know, I started with the Out Couple, ah, the honeymoons. Let me eat another Twinkie. Then uh, the uh, the, uh, psh, the Twilight Zone. I gotta have a Twinkie for the Twilight Zone, and this time I'm gonna get two and some milk to dilute them. It's a one hour. Yeah, it's a one yeah. hour. You gotta get two, and then at one I watched something else. I had yeah. HBO when I was a kid, so I watched something else. Yeah, you know HBO was brand new. Oh, and HBO late at night. HBO they had crank one brand out. Brand no, you in the late movie when I was a young man, seven. When that happened, not not when I was seven. When I, that happened, I was in the eighth grade, so I'm talking about 78. The hot movie at the time they kept playing that you'd whack off to was Kentucky Fried Movie or The Groove Tube. The Groove yeah, Tube had a chick that. that ran across naked with her titties, right. and you had that big box with three levels, 
and that's how you got channels in those days. Yeah. So each one had one to seven, seven to twenty one, and twenty one to. That's right. I that was it. About that was that. it, guys. That was cable fucking TV, yep. and it had a string connected to the TV. So you had that's it. That's a TV. You had a string with a box on it, and then it had like levels. So you had zero to seven, seven to fourteen, and fourteen to twenty one. Right. Fucking tremendous. And HBO was eighteen. HBO was eighteen, and you could press it. That's how you did it. You pressed the fucking HBO and you got all excited. Nobody was around. And that's the first thing I fucking whacked it was yeah. that group. Oh, too. yeah, yeah. But I remember being six in the morning and still eating those Twinkies and being jazzed up and not knowing what's going on in your life. Like just yeah. being jazzed up and going, why do I feel this way? Right. And being awake the whole fucking day. And years mm. later, one night I'm sitting there think, talking to somebody and they're like, yeah, remember that trip? And I'm like, yeah. The night before was the most interesting night of my life because I stayed up all night eating Twinkies. They're like, fuck yeah, you did. If you ate the whole box of Twinkies, that'll keep you up all fucking night yeah. at that age. Yeah. Getting coked up on Twinkies. Like sucking a dick one after the other. Little, oh little, brown, little brown Twinkie dicks. And ever since that time, you know what? If I'm high and I gotta eat a Twinkie, I'll eat it. But I don't think, I think since that eighth grade, I think I've had two Twinkies. Yeah. <laughs> that was his thing. For like a dollar a piece. That was his fetish. Oh my God. He got he... into boys listening to him <laughs> fuck. We got there, he was fucking the shit out of her doggy style. We all ran away. We were like, what a fight. <laughs> We got there 10 minutes before he started fucking her. We're like, not even in there. And all of a sudden you heard her go, oh, oh. And he's like, yeah, that's it, suck it. <laughs> we tried to look. We... <laughs> there must have been eight of us trying to look at that window. We just heard them fucking fucking. And I heard meat. Like, that's the first oh, time I heard balls. Yeah. Hitting. And we ran out of that dog. And the next day, he's like, <laughs> the, the next day, he's like, did you guys come by? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh. Dude, that's the weirdest fucking neighborhood guy I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, my God. Holy shit. Well, that guy's great. But the Ali brothers. Think about how many, like, first you had with that guy. First drinking fucking... I never drank with him, I don't think. He didn't, no? He, no, 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 no. He got his weed, and he was like, dog, if I do this for you, you got to keep it on the level. I can't have the, you know, he was very yeah. careful. But the Ali brothers were the first per people that told me, like, this all was happening at once. So I was living on giving that terrace, but I would play on 26th Street. And the Ali brothers were hysterical. The Ali brothers were the first people I ever met in my life that went to a hookah house. And they would both describe the experience to me. And it was like a fucking perfect film. You couldn't write this. Now in my memory. Because Juan Ali was very intelligent. And he would say, yeah, you give him 10 bucks. And you go in the back room and they fucking take your shoes off. And they take a bucket out and they wash your dick. And they get on the bed and they ask you what do you want to do if you want a 69. And we do everything. And we do everything. We're there for like an hour. We eat them. They give us a massage, the whole fight. And when you're fucking 12 and a 13 year old's <laughs> telling you this shit, your mind, it's like Pink Floyd the first time. Yeah. yeah. You go home and think about that shit and think about the possibilities. Hey. You're like, maybe I'll go over there, I'll put on my best suit. I'll get 10 bucks and see what the Bronx has to offer. Are you fucking kidding me? But every Monday, there'd be a circle around these two and they'd be telling us all their sexual escapades, hmm. you know? The oh, fucking yeah. Ali brothers until I hit the I, right thick right next to where they lived was a company called Duratest, and they made light bulbs, all sizes. They made these things, but the best thing for us as kids was when they made the office, the skinny long ones. Yeah. Oh, all that ha I could hit you in the head twenty five times, nothing will happen. They just break and you get white powder on you. Okay, so we would jump over the dumpster get like 150 of those things and everybody would take an armful and we'd go to war with each other. No shit. Ba ba ba. We'd hit each other. No cuts. Never, never a misunderstanding. And it was me, Juan Ali, Martin Perez, 
all these white, Dean LaPree, all these white dudes from 2060 were all out there, but there was a roof, <clears throat> a flat roof over a garage next to Juan Ali's house, and there was access to the roof. So we're having this war, five on five, everybody's hitting each other with these fucking things. I run to the roof, I'm having my own private war up in the roof, and somebody throws a rock over. They throw a bulb over, right? <laughs> then another bulb comes over, bah! And then a rock comes over. Well, I take the fucking rock, and I look at the guy, and I go, don't say that. And I throw the rock up, up in the air, Right, and I just leave it like that, and all of a sudden you hear, uh, and we look over. Not the smart Ali, but the retarded one, Alberto, the one that used to always say, "See, you so look at my song." Yeah, like he was the one that he was like Louis. He's like that character Louis that wasn't intelligent, but he was going, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I was there? He was that yeah. guy. But I hit him in the head with that fucking. No rock. shit. I clocked him right here. It didn't break, but he got a lump immediately. Like a hematoma. Yeah. But it was a hematoma that got that pus went right to it. Oh. And he had a little pee hole in it, you could see. And he was on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the floor. Like my friends didn't give a fuck. He got in there with the rock. They give it in with light bulbs and shit. <laughs> oh, it sounds like what's the movie uh, where New York he, gets he, put inside like He's a, the um, dumb one? <laughs> <laughs> they hit him maybe through a ten light bulbs <laughs> while, he, while he was down. By the time we got to him, he had powder all over him from the light bulbs. <laughs> but you can still see the lump on his head. I'll never forget it till this day. I always look him up on Facebook and Google him. I can't get a hold of him. And that's how they spelt their name, Ali. A L E. It was a Cuban name, Ali. Yeah. I'll see the Irishman, fresh from New York, four months, the summer, dead of August. Humidity, yeah. you go home, you wash, you got dirt in your hair, but you're still in the greatest city in the fucking world. It's it makes up for it. All the all the shit people complain about in New York, it's like ah, those are details. The the headline is that my soul is alive. I'm creative, I'm writing new shit, I'm bumping up against Asian girls with open toed sandals on the subway, looking down, pretend I'm checking my phone, but I'm really looking at those nubby little yellow oh. toes. Oh, with the good, good fucking uh, not self manicures, no paint, just the natural color of the, of the toenail. Makes you want to go to one of those human trafficking joints over on Burbank <laughs> Boulevard, pay a chick the extra twenty to whack off on her toes. You know what I'm saying? Sweetie, one on the floor, one on the table. Oh, Let's yeah, split yeah. those no, feet up. Listen, those fucking <laughs> third world nations over there. You know, I always drive through. Uh, either Burbank Boulevard or Magnolia. Yeah. I go to Jiu-Jitsu, and I either take Magnolia or Burbank Boulevard. And I can't tell you how many times I'll be somewhere and I'll notice a new massage parlor. Yep. And I'm always this close <laughs> to walking in one. I go to one, but I go in there with my wife. It's yeah. right over here. They really do a fucking job for, for, for three. Yeah. They got a happy hour. 29 12 bucks. to 3. Yeah. Oh, you think you're in heaven. Unreal. Plus, they take your little... shoes off, they soak your feet. Yeah. yeah. They rub from your knees down. They yep. put your hips back in place. Yep. They rub your hands, your forearms, your neck. They twist your fucking neck. Then they take you in the other room and they rub you down. They put hot stones on you for the small 40. And they give you for a an fucking hour, hot, hot cup of tea. A hot on top cup of, of it. tea. Yeah. Fuck, that place is tremendous. And here's the other tip I got if a punch card. If you're going to go to one of these places, Get there before three o'clock because they're not ch they're not changing out the sheets. So you uh, want to you want to be the first oh, new no, guy place, on those sheets. This place is tremendous. They may change the face rest, but they're no, not no, changing. No, no, they change everything. Yeah, yeah, they change. I watched. I've been going there. Somebody, a kid from jujitsu, said go to this place. Yeah, I was like, tell me the truth. Am I gonna get a hand job? <laughs> yeah. I go, don't make me go to a place then because that place is next to a little store I go to. Yeah, and the two sons always talk to me about sports and uh -huh. comedy and shit. So if that's a massage parlor joint, a hand job joint, yeah. please don't fuck with me because I'll be embarrassed if I walk out of it and they see me. Yeah. And one day I was in the store and I asked the guy if he heard anything about that. I'm thinking of going over there just to cover myself. And he goes, people love it. It's fucking busy all the there time. There you go. And Great they had a light. sign that said happy hour. Mm. 12 to 3, 20 bucks. Neck, feet, and legs or something. Shoulders or something. Mm. You, get it. You, leave. you never went over there with me. 
No, I haven't. <laughs> oh, you got to buy him a gift certificate oh for that God. place. He won't go. His girlfriend won't oh, go. We did Zeal when we had Zeal. Yeah, I know, but you'll do Zeal. But I don't know the Chinese people and... You know, I mean, they're immigrants. You're the only one who like you. You only like Chinese people. I know. I like I'll, I like all Asians. I'll take you over there with me. One Thank day. you. Because if not, he won't go. He won't be allowed to go. Oh, you think? Uh, whip him and stuff. And I got. I went to a play. My wife gave me a coupon for a. Uh, you know, I live down in Venice, and right on Lincoln Boulevard. You know, there's there's all kinds of shacks on Lincoln Boulevard. Oh, they do have shacks down there. Oh yeah. So she gives me this coupon. She got it in the mail. You know, one of those value pack. Envelopes that come stuff. You clean your carpets and you go get a, a fucking uh, Whopper with cheese and, and dry cleaning. It's like all, all those coupons. And one of them is for this Thai massage place. So it's my it's my birthday. And she sends me over there. And uh, and I walk in and there's this cute little, little tiny Thai girl behind the counter. And she leads me back to the room and, you know, take off your clothes, get under this towel. So I'm laying face down. And I wait. You know, a few minutes goes by, and then I hear I hear the door open, and uh, are you ready? I'm ready. And then she starts rubbing, but it's like she's fucking strong. Like this is not what I expected from this girl. And she's working elbows and knees, fucking you know, deep. And I was like, wow, this is. And then uh, and then gets to the ass and starts oiling it up, doing some deep circles, like like round to the point where I'm going like, did I take a dump today? Where you start worrying about your hygiene and how it smells back there. And then she goes get and she gets in that crease between my ass cheek and the leg. You know, she's got her finger in there and I and and then and then there's like a little ball graze. And I think, "Uh oh." Then she gets the other cheek, same thing, rubs it, oils it, gets in that crease, second ball graze. Now you got my attention. Slaps me on the ass. You turn over, which is foreplay for a lot of guys in America those three words you turn over I turn over I look up and it's fucking it's a dude with lipstick on Asian dude long hair lipstick on it's not the woman from the front desk and he starts rubbing my thighs in front of my thighs are you putting me I swear to Christ why are you telling me this you know I did like 10 stars tonight the sting of mushroom I swear to Christ you're scaring me right and so the dude's rubbing my thighs and he starts to he starts to go on the inside <laughs> and I start to feel a little little pressure. Oh my God. And then uh he didn't go for it. And to this day, I think I don't know what would have happened. Like I, I can't I can't look you in the eye and say that no was on the tip of my tongue at that moment. I think I would have said no. It was the lipstick. <laughs> yeah, it was the lipstick when you're laying on your back anybody shows up with lipstick you let them suck your dick you know what I'm saying are you kidding me? and one night I went in there like one night it was piss on somebody night like spit on somebody night like there'd be a guy on the third floor in a yeah. tub but I went in there one time and there was a guy and they were playing like uh, Wheel of Fortune it wasn't called Wheel of Fortune it was called like Spin the Cock <coughs> and the guy would they would tie him up naked like, like, like Jesus but spread his legs <laughs> on and a if, wheel. On a wheel. And if he won the, the ballot or whatever, they would make him go upside down and somebody would suck his <laughs> dick while he was upside down. <laughs> and I'll never forget. The winner or the loser? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck. But I'll never forget going in there one night on a lewd looking for a gram of blow. Like me and my buddies. Like that was the last resort to get blow. And we went in there and everybody was around this, like, you know, cheering, go, 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 go. And I'm at the bar, like, yeah, let me get a gram of blow. And he goes, like, hold on five minutes. And I'm like, what's going on over there? And it's like, it's, oh, you didn't know? Because he was gay as fuck, this guy. <laughs> His name was Joe Gash. He goes, you didn't know? It's, you know, Wheel of Cock Night or whatever. So I go over, and this poor bastard is upside down, and this fucking Puerto Rican with a little mustache and a little earring is sucking that pipe. <laughs> But oh, I figured out, like, I didn't know this for years. Like, this type of shit. You're not supposed to see that when you're 18. But here's the thing I don't here's the thing I understand about Joey Diaz and the church, what's happening in general. If I had one story that good, you would know I had that story. Because I would have told, I would have already told it 30 times. This is one of many. That's what I'm saying. But, but I thought about it, and I thought about one thing. I'll never forget that he was sucking the guy's dick and I was behind him and all these gay guys were like, go, go, yeah, go, yeah. go. <laughs> and 
and I finally went Is over. bankrupt bankrupt you gotta eat his uh, asshole? No, I don't know. I don't know. The guy's upside down, he's yelling because the blood's in his head. So this guy's sucking his dick, but I'll never forget that. Something made me go around to look at what the guy what looked like that was sucking his dick. And he was sucking it. You understand me? When all the blood goes to your head, I don't think your dick gets hard. So this guy had both his cheeks connected. Like he was like <laughs> And I never forgot, like at that time I don't even think I got my dick sucked. Like, that's pretty interesting. That guy, that guy sucking for his life. Like he was sucking for his fucking life. He... <laughs> I love how you pass out of the set of blood, but you just sit there and watch this. I watched it for about a minute, and then I went back, got my grandma coke, and left, and never said nothing to nobody. It was nobody's business. You know what I'm saying? I saw a guy get his neck upside down. Who says that type of shit to people? Who watches that type of shit? You got to watch it if it happens in front of you at least one time. He had to wait for his coke. You, you know. gotta wait for the coke. I might as well watch oh. what's going on. What's going on with the talent? You know what I'm saying? Maybe I want to <laughs> jump in. I would love to get my dick sucked if I was upside down. I think I get a panic attack thinking back. Like if my head is underneath, I don't care how hot she is. If she's just sucking my dick. Well, it's a race between passing out and coming. Is that what it is? Yeah, I think I think you hear about these people that uh, ex- asphyxiate themselves while they masturbate, and I've always thought. You know, I've masturbated for a lot of years, and I'm good. But could I take it to another level? No. But I'm afraid. What if I did, and and I and I forgot to let go of my neck or whatever? That's that's not the way you want to be. So, okay, so like the guy from Nexus, he goes into a room. I think he was in a closet, and he put 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 his belt around his neck. You put your belt around your neck, and you hold one and pick your weight up. I guess or you so. just choke yourself. I think you have to tie it off because isn't that how David Carradine, one of the Carradine brothers, died doing that? And then Robin Williams is supposedly. Am I wrong? So whoa, 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 whoa. let's go back here. So it's like suicide while you're jerking off. And yeah, you try happens. to choke yourself. You know how when you're getting choked out, you get lightheaded and a little yeah. euphoric. Yeah. So I guess you combine that with masturbation, and it takes. To me, masturbation after all these years is still so fucking good. Like I don't, I don't picture making it better. It's like it's all in my control. It's joy. It's a release. It's a little shame afterwards, but the actual experience of it, I still can't believe after all these years, there's nothing that I still enjoy as much as that one activity. And there's nothing else close. You know, when it comes to me, I like banging one out, but I like banging them out on the road. Yeah. Like in the shower. In the shower. Like I love banging one out in the shower when I can lay down and sit and I got time. I condition my hair, I shave. You lay down in the shower? I love that shit. I, oh, for years, I lay down in the shower. To me, it's if when I get off a plane, oh, that's the thing I look most forward to when I land, at, at a, especially at a hotel. That's why when I go to these fancy, smancy hotels, yeah. they don't have a shower curtain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They don't have the yeah. whole glass anymore. They don't have piss, a tub. Yeah. yeah. They piss me off. I turn the hot water on. I fucking smoke a half a number. Sometimes I'll take a little piece of a Xanax. And I just sit in the hot water and I fucking think. I wait till it gets hot, nice and steamy. Twenty minutes in, you shave. It's like shaving through butter. Yeah. You know. How long are you in there for altogether? Sometimes an hour. <laughs> Sometimes two hours. <laughs> the fucking room, the shower at the. Uh, You're gonna get a call the, from the uh, from Greenpeace about that where, one. Where, I don't give a fuck. Where's uh, <laughs> where's uh, what's the hotel I stay at? South Point. South Point shower. Is. Where the brick ends? Yeah. All the way to there. Yeah. You walk in, you open up the thing, they have a sink in the shower. And then they have a gun. And then they have a shower. And then they have water that comes out of the walls. And they have a little bench. You know how many times I've gotten up there at <laughs> four in the morning? Rolled the fucking joint, smoked it, gotten toasted. Because I paid a two fifty fine there. I don't give a fuck. Because by the time they, it's just a big room. I'll pay. I'll smoke a joint in the bathroom. I'll sit in there from four to six thirty, <laughs> <laughs> thinking about my life. Imagine the neighbor, Lee. 
You know, because you can hear that shower going no, in the next can't. room in the no, hotel. Oh, he has a big room in, at the... At the but, he knows at the South Pole. He's been in it. Yeah. But you, but you used to do that when you were big, right? You used to I, sleep in there? I lo- When I had the sleep apnea, I realized that the only way I could fall asleep is if I was on an angle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you go to these people's houses, they're rich, and you ever take a shower at somebody rich's house? $1.8 million, $2 million, and after 10 minutes, they got no hot water. You got a waste of a house. Yeah. <laughs> you got your house is a waste. Yeah. Ten minutes and I gotta I gotta wait another half hour for the water right. to get hot. You got beat. Right. I lived in a building in Hollywood that they had one of those old tanks. Do you know I used to sleep in there? <laughs> You'd keep the water running while you slept? Because that's the only way I could sleep when I had the sleep apnea that was four hundred pounds. So I would go in the tub, I'd take a pillow, and I'd put a garbage bag on it. <laughs> one, of those, one of those fucking hefty, 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 so wimpy, many ways wimpy, you wimpy. Die. I would fucking close off the pillow. I would put it behind me. I would put the hot water on it, and it would hit like my stomach. Mm. And I'd just fucking sleep there. When I'd wake up, the paint would be peeling off the wall. <laughs> Before we moved there, we had to paint the bathroom. I peeled the primer off the wall. Sheetrock was coming off. Mold. The fucking top was just mold. Yeah. And you could see where it was just drip with brown mold. Every time you would paint it, the mold would come right through. When I fucking first got diagnosed with sleep apnea, that's the only way I could sleep. I love showers. Yeah. I've always loved showers. I don't understand dirty people whatsoever. Do you take baths? No. I don't want to bathe in the same water the germs that came out. I want the stuff to flush. Okay. I want to sit. Baths, Baths is something... Like drinking for me. Like in the 70s, when you watch a TV show, if Greg walked in here in the 70s, I would turn around and have a bar with a bottle filled with a brown booze. It could be scotch, bourbon, whiskey. You don't know, but you didn't have the balls to ask. I poured two of them and I just gave it to you. Joey Diaz, I got to tell you, man. You're the real deal. Just so, just hanging out with you for 10 minutes before the show. Nothing makes me happier. You're just no, a, you're just, just a fucking real guy. Why you don't give a around? shit. No, there's no all talking that shit, shit about going. sober October, making me laugh about fucking Ari. I just got here doing bong hits. What, yeah. What are, we, what are we gonna do? It's a beautiful day to be alive. It's eight degrees outside. We got our legs. Yep. We got our arms. We got our right. health. Right. Uh, no yeah. ED. No erectile dysfunction. You ever get one drop on you? Fall down a flight of stairs. What, what's that? Your dick. Uh, I'm getting to the point now where you get it there, and once you bang out one, then you're done. Done. Like, done. It used to be where I could shoot <laughs> one that would stay half of the tension. Yeah. And then you go back in there for the second stab, and that lasts a little longer, and everybody sees stars. Yeah. That got cut out. No, I got a, I got a 24-hour shot clock on mine now. Yeah. It resets. Yeah. 24 yeah. hours. It's it's. Uh, and the yeah. worst is I, I'll go to my office. I got an office like this, about the same size, just fucking all business. A little couch, and uh, you know, I'll watch some Japanese hidden camera massage porn, lesbians. <laughs> and I work one out, and then I come home that night, and the wife throws a move on me after the kids go to bed, and I got to look her right in the eye and go, You're "Too late, sweetie. You're too late. That one's gone." No, I usually don't bang one out in the daytime. I'm no? a late night type of dude. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. I'm not a daytime banger either. I like late night when I got nothing to do at night. You're bored. You might as well bang one out. I go take a pee and I'll bang one out standing up. No shit. Yeah, I'm old school. I standing up? Yeah. You land it all in the water or is it all over the place? Fuck yeah. No, I land it right in the toilet and then I close it and it's a little space. Sea monkey. Remember in the 70s? <laughs> yes, you put that powder right. in the water and you close the... <laughs> sea <laughs> monkey. I got a back bathroom. Yeah. I'll come in that toilet I'll put the <laughs> lid down. I go away. I come back two days later. I got like a half a kid in there. There's like a, there's like a hand with a fly on it in there. It's telling me, help me, help me. Get the fuck out of there. Flush them down the toilet. You got a herd of fucking horses. I got a back bathroom that gets those retarded flies. Yeah. Okay. I, I, when what I take what a do you sh- mean? They're slow? They get big and slow? I don't slow? know what happens. I open up the door and I take a shit. And while I'm taking a shit, I, you know, I, I love taking a shit with the back door open. Yeah, I, I the per, when we rented this house and I saw the layout, nobody comes to that bathroom. You have to walk through too, too many mazes, so it's my bathroom. I got a couple <laughs> kettlebells on the floor. I got some club weights and shit. I got two punching bag, uh, two gloves in there. 
I got my bong in there. I got other like, wall watch in the back door, my Santeria stuff. And I got the shitter. And it's perfect. And I open the back door. And the sun comes in at 6 in the morning after my first cup of coffee. And as I'm fucking smoking bong, it's this shit flying out of my ass. When you cough, what's better than coughing out of bong? It There's come, nothing better. No, it comes right out. And for some reason lately, as you get older, you get those extended pieces of shit. What? The ones that aren't long no more. They, they're like six inches, but the middle has like a four-inch gap, yeah. like a mushroom cap. Right. So your ass stretches out for a minute. Yeah. It's like fucking... You guys are both saying yes. Like, I, what are you talking well, about? Yeah, as you get older, your body changes. Okay. You young guys, so your shit's changed. So the, the, like, like, like last there's a... week, last Monday, and I got to be honest with you, I'm on, I'm very honest, I do not do pain pills, but I had an Altoid can that <laughs> people give me on the road. People give me little different pills. I put in my little Altoid. Like Vicodins, Hydrocodone, whatever. I got whatever. everything in there. Do you know what each pill. one is? No. Uh, <laughs> not really. Not really. You know, I have an idea, <laughs> but not really. So some nights, you know, so when we had the last night before Sob October, we came in here and, we, and I had like six codeine threes, and I ate them. Let me tell you how much I don't eat pain pills. They clogged me up all week. Oh, yeah. That's the problem. They destructed me all week. Coffee. I could feel the shit in my stomach. Yeah. I finally said, fuck this. The other morning, I ran over to Pete's, the Mexican place up there. They got a fruit salad. Whenever you eat there, at the end, they give you a fruit cup with the Mexican cream on top. It makes you fucking your dick hard just eating it. Yeah. They give you a couple of blueberries and raspberries and strawberries and uh, melon, the, the green melon. Right. It's tremendous. I just went up there and said, give me a fruit thing with no cream on it give me half the cream i ate the whole fucking thing and friday night i was on that throne like i said they were coming out in chunks yeah you could hear it it's like people throwing sheetrock off the yeah, roof yeah. <laughs> it was like, bah, 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 bah. and your asshole is distended three, three times i went in there and it was like 10 minutes of bah, yeah. bah, like flushing i had to get up and fucking get the pogo stick and push it down <laughs> Whatever the fuck you call that thing. Loading a cannon. I yeah. had a fucking, I got the big extended one for gorillas. Yeah. The ones they use at the gorilla cage in the Bronx Zoo. I'm pushing down on this motherfucker. <laughs> but for some reason, I attract, I attract these flies, and they go against the bathroom window, and they kind of get retarded. Yeah. Right? So after a few days, they just come into my lair, and I got a little weed container. <laughs> a glass container that's empty weed, and yeah. I put them in there. I take one of their wings off to fuck them up a little bit, and I put little holes and I feed them weed. I just give them weed, and for three or four days they're just eating weed. They don't know, <laughs> and I just put more flies in there. I got about eight of them in there right now, and they're oh, fucking. Do you let them out? No, no, they're in there. I'm like that's Hanna, it. I'm like that dude in Hannibal Lecter that collected the bugs and put them up chubby chicks' pussies. Yeah, and then he would drop them off in the weeds <laughs> off the 170. What's remember the. Put the cream on the skin. That dude, the yeah. creepy dude. Dropped the yeah. drop the lotion in the yeah. bucket. Drop the lotion in the bucket. I don't remember bugs going in the pussy in that movie. That no, movie. It was a moth. Remember? It was a moth. Oh god, I don't, I don't remember that. He part. would put moths in their mouths or something. Oh. Yeah, that's how they found them. They right. found the moth in the mouth and right. They they figured out that the moth got sent from some other country. And yeah. They no, I used to take those Vicodin. I got a I got shoulder surgery. It's probably going back five years. I got shoulder surgery just from repeated throwing shit my entire life. Just the right the right shoulder needed to be rebuilt. And they gave me, I had the surgeon write me Vicodin. I had the general practitioner write me hydrocodone. I had uh, somebody in physical therapy write me somebody. I, I was filling every, everyone for fucking nine months. These guys kept refilling it. And then I'd go into people's medicine cabinets. If I came to your house for dinner, I'd excuse myself to go to the bathroom and I would rifle through your shit and I would take your hydrocodone. If there's anybody out there, friends, family, that have had me over in the last five years and you think you got a little hydrocodone left for when you get a, a backache, you're going to have to refill that. That's gone. Thank you for the honesty. Yeah. That's why I don't put my shit in the bathroom. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'd go to open houses. I got my medication in the weirdest places. Yeah. Like my blood pressure medication <laughs> in the kitchen next to the refrigerator, so I'm reminded to take it. Yeah. And all my methamphetamine, meta, 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 little do pills. 
running out towards I got them <laughs> hidden. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Those are hidden because I don't want Mercy to find them. I know. You got to get a safe. And I don't. First of all, I don't have them to put up in my, like some people take them and they put them in their medicine cabinet. Yeah. I don't have the anxiety shit the doctor gives me. Yeah. I don't put it in there. I don't even take it on the road. I wash more of those anxiety pills than I oh, take. Oh, you tell me. You put them in your pocket before I you come to the store. I wash more than I take. Yeah. You know, so. But it was interesting. Before the podcast started, we were talking about the Friars Club. Oh, right. What right. are the requirements? Well, back in the day, the requirements were that you had to be a man. I don't know what the... I don't think there was ever a race rest restriction. There's a lot of private clubs in New York that had race restrictions. You know, you had the, uh, the Union Club and the Players Club. There was a whole, like, circuit of private... Clubs are mostly in like old, beautiful brownstones, like five story brownstones. And the Friars Club was founded as a club for entertainers. It was for comedians, Borscht Belt guys that were on the road, uh, Broadway actors, songwriters, entertainment attorneys, agents. And they, they all joined this club and they would just hang out. And they had a uh, the Joey Lewis bar. You came in on the left and it was one of these old time New York bars with the fucking red padded rubber on the edge of the bar and then some deep black booths in the back and they serve you the fucking peanuts that everybody's pissy hands have been rifling through all day but you eat them anyway and guys just come in there after work have a couple drinks and then during the day guys that come in for lunch the dining room was fucking beautiful i think it was the frank sinatra dining room and you get the dover sole and they they take the bones out right at the table they come over and they fillet it for you right at the table and you just put it on your account. Nobody, you don't bring money to the Friars Club. Everything is just, they know your number. They throw it down. Then you go upstairs and they got a, a, a card room. Guys play cards all day, betting, all fucking like, these, you know, they're working at night. They're comics. So they have their lunch. They play cards. And then upstairs they get a steam room that's the best steam room in the city. And you walk in, you get your little locker, and then they give you a robe and you walk into the steam room guy comes in he's got a towel and then he's got a washcloth that they they uh that's got ice cubes on it and he hands you that the glass of water and then uh when you get out you walk into the shower you take a shower big fucking big shower with the the power nozzle that blows that shit out. it's like a civil rights riot in the 60s you're getting blasted against the wall german shepherds are barking underneath the, the stall and then you come out and this polish guy takes a towel not making this up and he fucking pats you dry, your whole body. You just stand there with your arms out. This guy pats you dry, everything but your dick. And then he wraps a towel around your waist, hands you another glass of water. And then you go back and you go sit and you put the robe on. And they got these, uh, these lazy boys sitting outside by the gym. Big screen TV, Variety Magazine, Hollywood Reporter. And you sit down and you fucking watch a little MSNBC, read Variety. Put a towel on your head, take a nap, and then you go out to your show that night. Do you have to let the guy dry you off? Why like, wouldn't you? I don't know. That seems it's a great feeling. How, how long have you been a member of this for? I joined in '93. And hmm. what are the requirements? I mean, you got to have uh, somebody recommend you and second you, and then they review you, and then you come in and <clears throat> they have a little ceremony where they swear you in and reads of the rules and all that stuff. So I joined. My father was a friar my whole life. I watched I watched the OJ chase at the Friars Club. I watched, you know, the 86 Mets win the World Series in that Friars Club. They had a they have a TV viewing room that's fantastic. You know, and the waiters are everywhere and fucking black jackets and bow ties getting you drinks and uh and then my I sponsored this woman Sarah Firon. Funny comedic actress, kind of quirky. And I, uh, I submitted her. She got accepted. She goes to the ceremony. And she brings her friend Aaron, and I'm there. And I talk to Aaron. She's with a guy, but I talked to her for like 20 minutes. And then after the ceremony, I said to Sarah Firon, I said, "I'm going to marry your friend someday." And uh, three years later, I started dating Aaron. Took her to the Friars Club. Proposed in the Mer Milton Burl room. I proposed to her. She said yes. The rest is history. <laughs>